Hi and welcome to the Market Alert for Wednesday the 17th of February 2021. So with impeachment over, Democrats forge ahead on the 1.9 trillion stimulus. We in Congress need to move forward. Yes, because every time you've tried to pin something on Trump, it's failed miserably. And over the second impeachment as well. So I think, you know, they ought to just get on with trying to do something about the economy. And of course, that is to print more money, which has worked wonderfully as I say sarcastically and ironically, over the last 13 years. It's just simply not the case. But that's what they're going to be focusing on now. And then this fool, uh, Bullard, says Bitcoin at 50,000, not a threat to dollar, sees no asset bubbles anywhere. I don't know where he's been uh, looking for the last 13 years. It's just normal investing. Uh, it's just incredible, isn't it? I'm not really sure, as he says here, um, you want to call that part a bubble. That's just normal investing, trying to get your head around what these companies are really worth. Absolute joke. Uh, and the reason Bitcoin is going up is because the dollar's going to uh, the floor. It's as simple as that. You know, nobody's interested in that. Go and have a look at the dollar index and you'll see that it's moving to the downside. So, of course, Bitcoin is traded against the US dollar and that's why it's going up. There's more value in that than there is in uh, being long the dollar. I mean, it's not rocket science, this stuff. They just won't admit that uh, all of the academic uh, training isn't, doesn't uh, apply to the real world. They think that by printing more money and piling debt upon debt is actually going to cure this. It's just incredible. And uh, this is uh, an interesting one as well. With all uh, games, there's always a loser. CMBC pushes convenient games stop post-mortem narrative. But this is the interesting bit. And it says here that all of a sudden everyone is acting surprised to find out that the stock market is one big rigged casino. Colour us bemused. Yeah, incredible, isn't it? They've denied it for years um, but because uh, they've been the mouthpiece for Washington and now, of course, uh, they've been exposed with the, the Reddit mob. Uh, and good on them as well, is what I say. Uh, world stocks hit uh, longest record streak in 17 years as yield surges. Yeah, this is interesting because uh, as the higher yields go, the less attractive the stock market is going to be. Uh, you have my uh, two two month, 10-year uh, charts that I keep. And I've noticed that the yield is uh, moving up uh, quite uh, significantly over the last few uh, weeks, which is uh, bad news. There must be something going on behind the scenes uh, for this to be happening. And I'm surprised that Biden and his mob haven't actually put some sort of uh, uh, fraud or sleight of hand in place to actually try and stop this. Uh, but at the moment, they haven't. They're letting it run. But the higher the yield goes, the less attractive the stock market uh, becomes as there will be a shift to buying bonds and coming out of stocks, particularly that they are at all-time highs or 17 years as it says here and that'll be interesting i mean the, the the bond market's also a bubble as well because of the printing by the government so yeah anyway implied volatility was up yesterday from uh, 1617 on friday to 1626 um yeah that's right so uh, yeah up uh, uh, slightly though. I was just thinking, I didn't cover this yesterday, that's because we didn't have a figure for Monday because it was President's Day. So yeah, uh, up uh, slightly there. There is some nervousness around, which you'll see in just a moment, uh, but still green on the uh, the uh, colour version there. So let's have a look, see where we are with uh, the overnight markets and start off with the Dow. Uh, again, you can see we're stuck in this sideways range. It's just a damn nuisance. We've got here, we've got sideways for uh, last week and now we're starting out the week having broken out on the overnight market president's day uh, the market was free to gap up on the the night and move up and then yesterday we had a bit of uh, weakness there but still above the five bar moving average so sideways in the dow and this is the same in the dax except for one thing and that's uh, prices have moved lower on the overnight but managed to rally back so far so this is really interesting because it's uh, weaker than the Dow, which is uh, also interesting because it hasn't been of uh, during the intraday session. I'm just going to make this point because obviously in the daily chart, you can see that it moved down, traded sideways and has moved back and has not taken out the all time high. But on an intraday session, it's been quite fascinating to watch the two where the DAX has actually been the stronger 
even though in the daily chart, I say in the macro, it's not actually taken out the all-time high. But a 50% retracement overnight in the DAX is also uh, interesting here. Uh, and back above the 38 and just trying to get back above the five bar moving average. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail and move over to uh, the start of the night session. And you will see that prices uh, came or opened, I should say, at uh, the low. The 200, well, we've got the DP above the 200, the, two, the 20 below the 200 and the five bar below the 20. And that's the way it remained as the low was taken out uh, immediately. Prices came back towards the low and then they went down to the S1 and then the markets tested twice at the S1. And then we've got about a 62, 78% retracement there. And then prices working their way back. And now you're starting to see a switch as prices have rallied back. We've gone back above the low, which is always uh, what they want to do. And you can see them driving through the low there with a spike in volume in the futures market, driving it back up. And that's where the market has held. We've gone back to uh, just move this. Let me delete this line. It's a bit confusing. So we've gone back to the uh, the big round number of uh, 14,050. Uh, we came back again and then we've gone back through. So at the moment sitting in this area and we've seen a switch there in the averages, but we need to get above a DP to get everything all lined up and moving in the same direction. So again, we're going to be interesting to see what happens when the uh, futures market uh, opens, but I've just noticed we've got some news there, which has just jogged uh, my memory there. We've forgotten this. So this is a CPI for the UK, which is out at uh, 7 a.m., which uh, is an odd one because that used to come out at 9.30, so very strange. Anyway, uh, and uh, we should have the RPI as well. Yeah, it's here. That's out as well at the same time. I've got HPI now at the 9.30 time. Very strange how they keep swapping all this stuff around, which is why I'm pausing because I have to keep looking at it and thinking, is this right? Uh, retail sales for the US at 1.30, that's always been the case. And 2 p.m., oh, we've got another, another clot from uh, the Fed speaking. And let's have a look, see if there's any more of the, now we've got uh, 7 p.m., oh, we've got uh, the FOMC uh, meeting minutes. Uh, that'll be a non-event because well, unless there is an announcement, but there's no announcement or press conference. It's every quarter. So next month, March, will be the interesting one. Blimey, March already. Where does the time go? Okay, so that's uh, what to expect today, what's in the news. And now I'm just going to have a quick look through yesterday. Again, really quiet. So I'm going to speed through this just to uh, uh, have a look, uh, highlight the pertinent points and then uh, that uh, will uh, do for today. So the market in the futures yesterday when it opened, trading down to the DP level, which was interesting uh, because you think they use every opportunity at the moment to bring the market back. And as we see and I wind forward, you'll see they attempted to do this at the start of the session. We'd already got a clue that it was going to be quiet because even when the futures market kicked off, if this is quiet, the opening of the cash market is uh, also quiet as well. So you can see here that they moved the market down. We had a, a signal, went straight down to the signal. And as I've said before, when you get a, a signal like this, which is counter to the main trend, which is to the upside, it's likely to uh, bounce back. And that's exactly what happened. And you see them bringing the market straight back and then back to the DP level as well, because they'll always want the market back to the DP. If they can, they will do whatever they can to try and get the market above this daily pivot. We then get a potential buy signal. This one isn't filled. We then go back to the downside and then we bring it back. And this time we do get a potential buy signal. But we've already got, as you can see here, the start of a sideways move. Whichever way you look at it, there's a sideways move there already. So uh, again, we're going to be up against it. The market, uh, they even try to buy back at the, in this bar here. It comes off the low. We've got a spike in volume. Prices fail and it's straight down, take the stop out. So we've got some weakness here, but then as soon as we get to the BRN, they bring the market back with some buying. Again, which you'd expect. But as we trade sideways, I'm just going to 
run through this. You can see how quiet it is. It was just uh, not tradable. They bring the market back up to uh, the 89% of this high to this low. And the market stops there. And then trades back down to the DP where they try again to buy it back, but it doesn't work. And then prices uh, drift lower. They go back down to the BRN. This time through to the 093 level and you see them buy back in at this point which is where they bought on the first uh, sell signal and eventually once the market hits the resistance here closes back below the five it's then free to drift back towards the low so uh, you'll see prices but it was just so quiet uh, desperately quiet which it has been and this is again the calm before the storm and eventually uh, they manage to bring the market back as uh, prices get back above the five bar, back above where the buying came in before, and they moved it back up to the 200 MA and the uh, resistance that we had um, from the morning's high. And the afternoon uh, wasn't much better. I wasn't here in the afternoon. I had a hospital appointment, so uh, I'll just take you through what happened. We've got uh, the market uh, trading lower coming back above the five bar but once it closed back below in the pre-afternoon session uh, prices started to move lower again got dp and uh, 200 ma and the five or 20 all in the the right order there, all below one another and they send the market to the downside it finds support and then prices uh, start to move to the upside. And interestingly enough, this line is that 62% retracement in the daily chart that uh, we looked at on Friday. We had a potential buy signal here. Uh, it just got filled, but there was, again, no interest in the, in the market at all. And the market comes back to the low, takes out the trade just to get through the low. You can see the selling disappear here, low volume and then they bring the market back. It's just uh, very, very non-directional at the moment. That's uh, what we're seeing. And uh, we need the volatility to start picking up in this market. And this is how it ended. Um, when I came back, I had a look and then realized I got the, and actually covered the screen that was recording. So this is how it all ended up uh, for the day. Again, you can see how, uh, well, actually that's not the 16th, that's the 15th. I'm going to say, dear, what didn't look like that when it opened? So uh, let me go to uh, this chart and we'll have a look at it this way. Because that's not right. As soon as I saw that, it didn't look right. So that must have been the one that I had it covered with. Must have scrolled back. There we go. That's more like it. So yeah, we, we traded up to that 200 MA. You then got the retracement and then it just traded back. So really, again, a, a strange trading session which is the second one we've had but we we have these periodically where the market gets really quiet and that's because in the daily chart it's trading sideways and also the implied volatility is down in the lows so there's not much uh, momentum but then eventually that uh, breaks and then we have uh, some really good trading sessions so it's just one of patience it's waiting to see now whether pelosi and uh, that other pillock what is his name Let's have a look. Um, can't think. Uh, Schumer. That's what his name is. Yeah. Uh, it. You know. It's just about this now. Waiting to see if they can get this, because then that will send the market back to the upside. That's how it works. That's how it's worked for the last uh, thirteen years or more. So at the moment uh, we're heading towards uh, the open of the futures market and also the news for the CPI. Okay, that will do it uh, for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.